All right, welcome back to Flag of Socks, the podcast, episode 185 today on the show. The Dems have initiated phase three of Operation Get Joe Biden Out. We'll tell you what's going on there. Then we have a recap of the RNC with all of the weird, the bad, the gay, and the ugly, but there is a silver lining. Then is cancel culture good when done against unhinged leftists? I'm going to tell you why I don't think it's hypocritical to say yes. And last but not least, we may have more proof that the deep state was trying to start a civil war last week when they attempted to assassinate Trump. This time, the evidence is from an insurance company, which tends to know what's going on with these kinds of things. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 185, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than actions words, louder than but, words. Louder than but words. at the same time, words, words speak louder than actions because, because sometimes, sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. cool. It's what the Stocks Podcast featuring Richard Bradwell. All right, one for one on the intro as always. Guys, can you feel it now? Something even bigger is coming. Your freedoms are up for the taking. And what's worse, the people that are taking your freedoms are the same people that have sworn to protect them. They think they can violate your right to protect your family. They think they can force delusions on your children. They think they can control the media and hide the truth from you. But you know what they can take away? Self-reliance and peace of mind. Got a water filtration system? You should. Do you have a charged solar generator ready to go? You better. Do you have emergency food on your shelf in case you really need it? Well, now's the time to get exactly that from My Patriot Supply. Having served millions of American families, My Patriot Supply is the most trusted name in survival and for a damn good reason too. Go to preparewithfleckas.com right now and save $200 on their best-selling three-month emergency food kit. These emergency food kits deliver 2,000 calories a day and come in super durable packaging, and they last on your shelf for up to 25 years. And did I mention, it tastes great. Go to preparewithfleckas.com right now and get as many three-month emergency food kits as you and your family need. Their prices will never be this low again. And shipping is free. Preparewithfleckus.com is the website. Go there now. It's linked in the description. Let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to My Patriot Supply for sponsoring. Thank you, My Patriot Supply. Longtime sponsor of the show. Longtime sponsor of the show, and they've been pretty correct. Yeah. Stuff's coming. It's going to get bad. You need to be prepared. And then every week, every day, there's new stuff that actually proves them exactly right. For sure. So that's why we're happy to have them as a sponsor. A very high quality sponsor. All right. First things first, we have a very busy show. Is it a Friday episode? It is. It's a Friday episode. Nothing's really going to change. We have a packed housekeeping. I think we have almost five pages of housekeeping, (laughs) but there's not much schizo stuff. There's a lot of business. Uh, There's a lot of business, a lot of actual political movement going on, and it feels like five months of political shit has happened in the last three weeks. Yeah. So we're on an escalated scale or something. Exactly. Know? So we have a heavy housekeeping, a lighter cringe, a lighter urban, great uplifting. Uh, but let's get right into it. Yeah. It's not the time to make fun of some guy with new pronouns anymore. Yeah. Like we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of beyond that. We're in, we're heading into the ninth. Yeah. You know, um, first things first, uh, there is a new easy to track deep state movement uh, that just dropped. Okay. Um, well, first Biden says a medical condition could prompt him to drop out if doctors come to me. Oh, so <laughs> he's giving them the in. That's called giving them the in. That's phase one. And then, uh, coincidentally within 24 hours, a doctor told Biden that he has COVID. Yeah. Uh, for the third time. For the third time. So I guess he maybe needs some more vaccines, mm. uh, but he tests positive for COVID, which is very convenient. Um, and that could be a way out for him. Yeah, I don't think COVID's enough to get him out because it's like, I've beaten it twice. He'll have some slur like, I've beaten that twice. (laughs) So, I mean, I don't know. And it's getting greasy. We're going to get into it in a little bit, how the tides are turning and uh, some high-level Dems are demanding he step aside. Yes, exactly. The tides are turning and we have a little bit of a clip montage coming up of his very weak week. Yeah. Uh, Here's him trying to get into a car. When he got down there uh, at the base of the stairs, there, there you go. You can see him. Questions by reporters. He told them, I am doing well. He gave them a thumbs up. 
he is now going to be isolating uh, he's stuck. at his beach house. And, and we did know he's he glitching. He's stuck. <laughs> he's stuck. He can't bring his other foot up high enough. He's stuck. Poor guy, man. Getting a little help just getting into the car there. Hard to make out through the rain. Uh, what exactly is he going stuck on there, that was a 20-second car entrance for Joe. Yeah, and they gave him the Hillary Clinton at the 9-11 memorial treatment mm -hmm. where someone from Secret Service kind of just <laughs> shoves him in, <laughs> puts you in, and never talks about it. Um, and then he gave a speech at the NAACP. Uh, here's some highlights from that. I know. I know you say, Joe, you may not have a Congress. Well, guess what? You all told me I couldn't pass the Inflation Reduction Act. They all told me I couldn't face it. Anyway, we did it. We're going to bring rents down, as I said. We're going to build 2 million affordable homes. And cap rent increases to 5% a year, so corporate landlords can't guard. Anyway, I don't want to get going. Oh. I'm going to get very upset. But, but they're, they're just gouging America. And by the way, not only saves lives, it will save taxpayers. Just what I did on the first round on dealing with Medicare. It saves the taxpayer $160 billion. So he's cooked. The anyway, the anyway bailout, two of them in like one 30 second uh, interval. That was his old, uh, that's like an old tick or an old habit of his. Whenever he gets rambling, he just goes, oh, anyway, I don't want to get going on it because I could talk forever. But yep. now he just uses it as a crutch whenever he doesn't make sense or he forgets what he's going to say. Yeah. And I, I imagine there's some sort of like missing where you were on the teleprompter. And it's just anyway, like you can't <laughs> get back to it. He's too old. He, uh, he's not in good enough shape. So, you, yeah, you can't use the anyway out. Um, when you don't answer the question mm -hmm. or make a point, yeah. if you make like half of a point and then go anyway, it's like, well, we asked you about it. Please make your points. It's only can be used when you list like 10 things and then you go eh, anyway. Anyway, that's about enough. You <laughs> know, I got eight of nine. <laughs> I've listed so many things, but he's <laughs> mid sentence doing it. And then also, um, Biden, he, he's doing the high volume, high energy thing while still making the same mistakes. So it's just kind of like amplified. You know, mm. it's actually worse. Yeah, it's dementia, but loud. <laughs> it's loud it's dementia. dementia, but loud. <laughs> yeah. um, here's him at an event where he thinks he's talking to his wife. Look at them holding hands. Okay, Jill, she's in a blue dress. And who's this oh, other God. one? <laughs> oh, and he literally says, oh. And the correction for the president there was, that, that that's not me. Yeah. I'm me. Yeah. And he goes, oh, <laughs> High level. Um, and then also, like, if you're that lady who has his arm and you're talking to Joe Biden, too, um, you're not going to get anything. He's not going to remember anything. You you can't peddle influence to a guy who can't remember anything and thinks he's talking to his wife. So it's a waste of time for everybody involved, right? It's too cooked. Yeah. It's called too cooked. Um, and then Joe Biden was doing a staffer call, I believe, or a call with, like, high-level Democrats. Donors. Mostly donors. Donors. And then the staffers handed him a note. Mm -hmm. And then he read the note out loud, which was meant for just him. Can you read the description? Yeah. President Biden was handed a private note during a recent call with Democrat House lawmakers, and he read it out loud. The note said, stay positive. You are sounding defensive. Biden said on the call, seemingly reading directly from his staffer's short missive. So it's like this. Hey, dude, you're you're sounding <laughs> defensive. Go, stay positive. You're sounding defensive. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like he's the only one talking. Oh. And he's telling everyone they sound defensive. It makes no sense, but it's perfect. Yeah. It's so, fun to watch. It, it's He's still in charge of nuclear codes. Like, there's, it's till January this guy's in charge. It's very volatile. So, I mean, it, it goes to show you that there is a deep kind of, like, bureaucratic state that's just operating. Mm -hmm. And Joe Biden can chime in with certain directives, and they need the power of his signature every once in a while. Yeah. But there's just people in Washington running this thing who have never been elected, Weird appointments, heads of departments who are kind of just steering the ship, and we're yep. hoping that they can do it until January, right? Exactly, and they do have a media apparatus that parrots what they want to parrot. Uh, Joe Biden getting COVID. Uh, Joy Reid went on the news to say that it's similar to Trump defeating assassination. Here's the question that I have on that. These two men are both elderly. Donald Trump is an elderly man who 
for whatever reason, was given nine seconds to take a iconic photo op during an active shooter uh, situation. Weird situation. We'll figure that out one day. Um, but his survival of that and, th and bouncing right back and going right to his convention is being conveyed in the media world as a sign of strength. This uh, pr current president of the United States is 81 years old and has COVID. Should he be fine in a couple of days? Doesn't that convey exactly the same thing? That he's strong enough, older than Trump, to have gotten something that used to really be fatal to people his age. So if he does fine out of it and comes mm. back, it is yeah. able to do So getting COVID, the nothing virus. That he's had three, third time. That is the same as getting shot and bouncing back. Yeah, getting shot knowing there's like a bounty on your head and then continuing to make public appearances. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's exactly the same, <laughs> I think, is what she said. And then Jen Psaki there, um, they're doing the like MSNBC thing. And Jen Psaki, I, we didn't want to play the clip because it's really long. But even she was like, that's kind of too far for me. Like, I'm not on that level of propaganda. And it's fascinating that Joy Reid is still all in on Biden when it's knives out for the Democratic Party, right? They have their allies. They have their assets. Mm -hmm. And if Jen Psaki corrected her, maybe we didn't realize Jen Psaki was a white supremacist. Yeah. <laughs> and then also, um, these guys, they're doing live RNC coverage. They're not at the RNC. This is just a green screen, which is what I just saw from uh, Sav Says Smart. on Twitter. So they're not even there. Good. That's smart because they would get booed and all their shots would get ruined. Mm -hmm. um, and then even Obama is starting to turn on uh, Joe Biden. Can you give that a read? Yeah. Breaking Barack Obama says Pre President Biden needs to seriously consider the viability of his can candidacy. That's the quote. Yep. So not an outright step down, but uh, Adam Schiff, some other notable high level Dems are kind of outright asking Joe to step down. And even Team Kamala is kind of asking as well. This is a quote, um, Jack Posobiec posted this, breaking massive drama right now in the White House, Kamala advisors straight up telling Biden advisors it's time to pass the buck. Exact words used per White House official. This is the first direct open confrontation at the senior level. Yeah. That's exciting. I know. It's getting crazy. It's heating up. And some people are saying that he might be stepping down or announcing something by this weekend. Um, friendly reminder that the Democrat National Convention is mid-August. Mid-August. So there's still some time, and that's in Chicago. So there's still like plenty of time, but they kind of need to hit the gas and have a plan and people write speeches and you know all that sort of moving parts that they need to get right before that happens. And then also um, sources say this just came out from the National Pulse. Sources say Pelosi will do everything in her power to oust Biden as Schumer, Jeffries tell him to go. Um, and this sh uh, the quote here says the former speaker does not want to call on him to resign, but she will do everything in her power to make sure it happens. So that's more of a backdoor. The thing. elder statesman. Yeah. Nancy the, Pelosi, 83 years old, 84, 84 years old. So Nancy's like. 84 herself and calling it for Biden. Like, you're, you lost it. You're too old. And you know what? To be fair, I agree. And Democrats, like, they're doing it way too late. And now it's like a scramble. They could have listened to right wingers a little bit earlier and kind of maybe had a plan. But they're at the point now where Joe Biden is the nominee. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The, the wheels are already in motion. So it's kind of he has to do it um, yeah. for, for them to get away with it, right? And also, they've kind of set a tone already with Dianne Feinstein dying in office in her 90s. They, Dianne Feinstein, I think had a brutal stroke. She was 90 years old, and they wheeled her in to vote. And like she was 25 like- 25-year-old intern was like wheeling her around. And then tickles her, so her hand goes up. <laughs> like, literally. Um, and, you know, a lot of right-wingers, uh, or people on Twitter, left-wingers actually, were like, oh, right-wingers don't say that for Mitch McConnell. And it's like, we do. Yeah. Mitch McConnell should retire. He glitched out like three times. Mm -hmm. That guy should not be in charge of anything. Exactly. So I, I like an 84-year-old telling Joe Biden he's lost it. Yep. And then there were some new polls that came out of how Kamala does against Trump. Can you kind of go through the highlights there? Yeah, because, um, you know, Kamala is next up, according to most of the DNC kind of uh, operatives. And Trump versus Kamala, it's even worse than Trump versus Biden, uh, which I was kind of surprised by. I thought maybe they'd at least fake it or something. Georgia, Trump plus 10. Florida, Trump plus 10. Pennsylvania, Trump plus 7. Nevada, Trump plus 10. Arizona, Trump plus 6. Yeah. So like blowout numbers. 
Let, let's let's do it. Let's yeah. run Kamala. Swap let's, her. Do we run Joe? Yeah. Whatever you think is best. Yeah. Um, all right. So while Joe Biden and the Democrats deal with their issues, the Republicans had some issues of their own at the RNC convention. First and foremost. That's redundant, by the way. The I RNC also, convention. Yeah, it's redundant. So you just say the RNC or Republican National Convention. I wrote that out in a tweet, and then I felt humiliated after. Yeah, that's, I got I it from you. It's I know. I know. Uh, first and foremost, 80% of the people at the RNC are active homosexuals. Yeah, there's a big grinder thing going on. Uh, an executive of the gay dating app Grinder says the Republican National Convention is basically Grinder's Super Bowl. And here's the heat map. Milwaukee is... <laughs> Hey, prepare for some monkeypox. And then the mon- they go to point, uh, it's like patient zero or origin zero, and then they fly out across the country. To, you know. That's a good point. It could be where monkeypox is spreading. Yeah. Um, and then we had someone with the Grinder app open who was showing how there's people in the building within feet that are active on the app. Zero feet away, zero feet away, zero feet away. A lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities. There's a lot. And, you know, on like normal dating apps, it's yeah. like you want to find someone within like 15 miles because you know they're maybe in the same city or in somewhat the same area. Yeah, that's the that's the north side of Chicago. Oh, I could drive 15 miles. Yeah. Like you see minutes. someone, oh, they're less than a mile away. That's pretty, that's close. That's good. The gays, it's off. It's in feet. The units is in feet. 226 feet away. And they go, <laughs> they shoot their head around and they're they like, go, where? You, bathroom, now. now and they bathroom. go, okay. <laughs> every time they go, okay. It's real dog park shit. And I have not, like, every time we learn something new, it's kind of a little bit worse. So yeah. they're measured in feet and uh, the Republican National Convention is full of them. Like, if you were to match with someone on Grinder and it was a mile away, they go, <laughs> What, I need an airplane? <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> There's too someone, far. Someone two feet under the table right now. I know. Um, and then Matt Gates actually confronted one of the homosexuals at the RNC. Speaking, what night are you speaking? Are you speaking tonight? Or? Hey, you're not, if you took that stage, you would get booed off of it. You would get That's good stuff. It's just heckling Kevin McCarthy. It's Kevin a long-standing McCarthy. beef. beef. Long-standing beef, but he told Kevin McCarthy, if you took the stage, you get booed off, which I like to see. Yeah. Um, let's get into some of the events of the RNC. Unfortunately, there was some sort of Indian prayer to start the whole thing off by Harmeet Dillon. <laughs> Dear Waheguru, our one true God. <laughs> what are you talking about? Our, our one true God. Wagu, Wahari Gu, Wahari Gu, the one true God. I googled him afterwards. Doesn't ring true. I haven't, <laughs> haven't heard that one. Doesn't tickle anywhere in my brain. I'm not really on where'd, board. Where in scripture is Wahari Gu? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, someone tweeted, uh, "What saved Trump? This was Jesus Christ, not some cow god from Pakistan." That's a fair point. Had to be said. Had to be said. Had to be on the record here on the show. Yeah. There was also some light Israel worship. <laughs> light? Well. Hello, Milwaukee. Let me hear you cheer if you support Israel. Let me hear you cheer if you support Israel. You're not cheering. I'm keeping <laughs> lock it, throw going, it, going like this, yeah. so everyone knows you're not clapping. <laughs> yeah, show your hands. Oh, yeah, that's the casino same hands. Same for Wahagru. You go dealer hands. Dealer nope. hands. You can see them. Um, not hiding yeah. chips. No hiding chips. So we had Amber Rose, the porn star, the Indian prayer, the pro-Israel stuff. Everyone's gay. Uh, yeah. But they're. Yeah. <laughs> But there was a silver lining. Uh, the notable Republicans not attending. Can you kind of go through? George W. Bush, Mike Pence, Mitt Romney, Liz Cheney, Paul Ryan. All out. Yeah. So that's the who's who of rhinos and saboteurs and anti-Trump types. Exactly. Um, so those people aren't there. That's progress. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am going to maybe give an alternative take that maybe people aren't familiar with. Okay. Because... RNC, everyone's gay. They're doing the Israel stuff, the the Indian prayer. Yeah. Not looking good, right? It's and ugly. Then, and then at night, they're all having gay, gay orgies. A lot of them are. Not all of them. It's not looking good. But, 
But I will say this, it's more voters. Sure. And the election's in two months. Yeah. And a reminder of where we're at. Johnson plans to remove Washington statue from hallway outside of Mayor's City Hall office. So they're taking down George Washington statues. Yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah. So even though it's kind of ugly, I think there's a big difference between Republicans and conservatives. Absolutely. GOP and conservatives as well. You know, yep. We have to keep that in mind. And we also have to keep in mind the elections in two and a two and a half months. Three-ish, yeah. Three and if half. we lose the election, the Democrats will win. They'll give amnesty to illegals and we'll never win another election again. Yeah. So I'm like with that, I'm actually fine with just as many voters as possible coming in in the next two months and voting for Trump. If you're a former Democrat or you never voted before or you're an independent or you're not sure about RFK or Trump and now you're going to vote Trump, come on in and vote Trump. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, a lot of the Republican infighting that's happening, like it's cool. And Matt Walsh on Amber Rose, you're right. You yeah, know? you're totally right. And you're right. Uh, we don't like it either. Um, but there is a little bit of win at all costs scenario going. And then afterwards, the people who will have Trump's ear are going to be more conservative than Big Ten. You know, as long as the policies get implemented. I read something else about uh, abortion and anti LGBT like uh, verbiage being removed from some sort of like pamphlet or platform. And it's like, yeah, cool. If that helps us win. And then after we're in power, do whatever we want. Exactly. Because that's what matters, right? Don't give Gavin Newsom free ammo to tweet something snarky to 40 million people, right? Exactly. Everyone's welcome. Come on in. Come on in. But Vote it's going to get greasy afterwards <laughs> for some of you. But there is a thing, too, where like an Amber Rose type yeah. doesn't really fit in the conservative movement, but- as a Republican, the the entire right wing, she can come and vote for Trump. If we reject her and make fun of her and say she's not conservative enough, then she goes, damn, both parties suck. I'm not voting. Or damn, both parties suck. I'm voting for RFK. Yeah. So let's let these people get their foot in the door. I think when people who come from the left and middle enter the right wing, they start where they were. And then over time, they trend to the right. Yeah, they start I, I, learning and hearing happens. more. Yeah, you they learn, get more red pilled. You shit. learn, you hear more. You find the personalities on the right you like. You hear their ideas said in a way that's not given to you through the left's lens or mm -hmm. the mainstream media's lens. So I think in over, like, let's get everyone we can to vote in November, and then over the next four years when Trump's in office, let's take all those people that were left leaning or independent and bring them further and further to the right. It's the same with uh, people who become pro life after being pro choice. Yeah. At first, it's, oh, it's a girl's choice. She can do what she wants. Whenever, if it threatens the life of the mother, you can have an abortion up until the last day. And then you start to become more pro-life and you go, well, actually, there should be some restrictions for rape and incest. And then you go, well, actually, maybe just the first trimester. And then eventually, the people come all the way to life starts at conception. Yeah. Our slope has some slip to it, too. Yeah, it you know? does. So th and then also, if you're feeling bad, if you're feeling like, ah, I got to eat Amber Rose and the Wahagru, we're going to make fun of it, too. I mean, Wahagru, our true God. I don't think so. But then the light at the end of the tunnel is 25 million illegal immigrants being bussed out. Remember mm -hmm. the buses, guys? The buses. We just need to get as many votes for Donald Trump as possible. And then we'll past, deal with it. Past the margin of stealing. Because if we don't. We think like, oh, we're, we're sacrificing our conservative values mm -hmm. in the short term, and then that's going to affect us in the long term. If we don't win this election, there is no conservative. There's long term after losing this election? The amount of abortions goes up. Like abortions will be mandated. <laughs> They're gonna, like, and then the amount of illegals is going to go up. The amount yeah. of illegals that are getting amnesty is going to go up. Like everything falls apart. So while it might seem unfortunate to sacrifice your morals and let people into the right wing – Let's just do it for two months and then win those people over with time. Yeah, that's that's the takeaway. But then there's also the takeaway where it's like, is this even a winning strategy? Is Amber Rose going to win us any votes? And it's like there's a little gambling to it, too. So yeah. um, you don't the nice thing is you don't have to compromise on your morals at all. You can disagree with Amber Rose and you can disagree with Waha Gru like I am. Mm -hmm. And you can disagree with the let me hear a cheer for Israel. Yeah. But, you know, um, I don't think we're at risk of the new arrivals pulling MAGA left. Exactly. 
I think MAGA stays where it is. The new arrivals come in. They realize everything was further right. And then over time, everyone drifts towards MAGA and drifts towards conservatism. And that's the base. The base is going to remain intact. If we lose the election, our lives are over. Can you read the Hodge Twins tweet about it? If we're going to win this election, it's going to be with the help of people who realized they were lied to in 2016 and 2020. Different backgrounds, cultures, religions, etc. If you support Trump and defend the Constitution, that's what matters. Don't act like some bitches when these new people join our side. We're going to win. Yep. That that's sums a, it up pretty good. Moderate take. We moderate got two take. months. We got two months. Everyone who wants to vote for Trump, go vote for Trump. Yeah. All right, let's move on to our next page of housekeeping. Use this opportunity to help us tickle the post. Juice the algo. Leave a like, leave a comment, then leave a comment again. Then start yapping. Uh, notifications need to be on. P.O. Box needs to be full. There you go. We need stuff. Um, all right. Our next page is dedicated to the developments since Trump's shooting. Some new information has come out. Uh, the Dems have done a really good job of cooling the temperature down. Absolutely. I think they've really grown. They've learned. Which is like one of the most important things following an event like that. Uh, someone on Twitter said, the fist pump is Trump's version of the Sig Heil salute. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, let's cool the temperature down. Mm, it's like 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, Hitler. <laughs> Immediately. Exactly. Um, and then since the event, uh, the attempted assassination, the Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle said that there wasn't anyone on the roof because it was sloped. And a sloped roof is dangerous. Can you read the exact quote? Yeah, that building in particular has a sloped roof at its highest point. And so, you know, there's a safety factor that would be considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof, mm. she told ABC News in an interview Tuesday. Yeah. Well, here's Secret Service on a sloped roof. No problem. No problem. Here's the woman's face again, just so you remind her. <laughs> just to, so that's who's telling you. Um, and here is the snipers on the sloped roof. And then too. there's them getting the shooter off the roof. Yeah. So there's they no, had to go up there anyway. There's no one had no one had an issue on the roof. The I roof's know. not even sloped. Mm -hmm. So that was weird. I know. And uh, that's like one of the most moderately sloped roofs I've ever seen in my life. I saw Mexican roofers across the street on a roof that was like this. Yeah. This is like a five degree slope. They were carrying like bags of heavy stuff. No fall protection. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, you know, and that's probably against some OSHA laws, but... Come on, man. Secret Service can handle it. Yep. And so there's a lot of unanswered questions, but do not worry. Uh, Mayorkas is blocking Secret Service Director from testifying. Thank you, Mayorkas. <laughs> Wait, Mayorkas, that's the guy who's leading the invasion of America as well? Yeah. Wow. No need to testify. I think the reason is probably because she's a girl and she gets she's probably nervous. Yeah. Yeah. She Maybe probably she's... doesn't do well under pressure or yeah. something. I don't she's know. She's a headache. <laughs> Um, and then Trump at the RNC, he upgraded his security to a bunch of goons like we recommended. Let's see if we can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All goons. Eh, one guy, five, eleven. Yeah. That was our advice. I know. And he needs to listen to it, too. And I think this guy is the one who was his body man after the shooting. Mm -hmm. And I like him. Yeah. He's recognizable now. They kept him. Yeah. Uh, so he's got new goons. That's huge. Yeah. And this issue with inept Secret Service agents and inept leadership has actually been going on for a long time. Trump in 2014, this was when there was a different Secret Service director. Yeah. But can you read what it says? He said, the woman who is Secret Service director looks like she is in way over her head. Why can't the president appoint the best and the brightest? And that was 2014, like you said. So, so there's been a history of some, uh, some rotten ladies in there. Thanks, Obama, Yeah, for all these admin types. Mm -hmm. And then Joe Biden did an interview about this incident with the Secret Service uh, director, Kim Cheadle, a woman. And here's what he said about it. I feel safe with the Secret Service, but look, and you saw what, the, what we did see was the Secret Service who responded risked their lives in responding. They're ready to give their lives to the president. The question is, should they have anticipated what happened? Should they have done what they needed to do to prevent this from happening? That's a question that's, that's an open question. Is it acceptable that you have still not heard, at least publicly, from the Secret Service director? Well, I've heard from them. But have you heard from her publicly? So oh, I've heard from him. I've heard from him. And then Lester Holt. Lester Holt backs him up and gives him an out and goes, oh, have you heard from her publicly? Trump doesn't get that treatment. Of course, that not. would be game over. Lester Trump Holt doesn't even like know. This. I know. He'd be like, "You, <laughs> you idiot, idiot! You're done. You, you didn't know who you're even the Secret Service director is." Uh, so Joe Biden goes, "Yeah, I've heard from him, and it's a lady." Yeah. And Lester Holt backs him up. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's good. That's yeah, good. I know. That's good for him. I mean, it feels good to be Joe Biden because you, you would almost think to yourself, if I'm so de- if I'm so senile and demented, why do I keep crushing interviews? <laughs> why do I keep getting through all yeah, this stuff? I'm exactly. Sorry, you know? Um, and then uh, one other sketchy thing that we didn't talk about, some sketchy stock activity, a lot of puts, meaning people were basically shorting the stock or betting the stock was going to go down. Yeah. Uh, a lot of puts were placed on the DJT ticker on the Friday before the Saturday shooting. Which is all Trump's company. Trump being on Truth Social drives the value of that. Uh, yeah, so a company called Austin Private Wealth LLC shorted 12 million shares of DJT via a put option. The filing date is July 12th, the day before the assassination attempt. They have around a billion assets under management, and this is by far the largest put uh, trade placed. According to a source, the trade represents 6% 6 of total shares and over 16% of the float uh, of the stock, given the fact that Trump owns 60% of the company. And so uh, it's a pretty big trade when you consider their assets under management. And it's it's basically uh, 120,000 contracts. For, wow, for short. So, so that's a lot of the open interest. It's a very, of course, yeah. They they basically created it all. And Someone had to write those, right? And then the the owner of that fund, I believe, is BlackRock and Vanguard, or at least partial owners. Yeah. So that's a little sketchy. Someone get a tip. Someone that's, get a tip somewhere. That's a little, you know, nine eleven lucky Larry shorting. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Shorting American Airlines on yeah. September tenth type stuff. And uh, the stock went up on Monday, so they got smoked on that position anyway so far. So that's good. And this At is least not, they, yeah. it was a failed attempt right exactly. now at this point. And this is not financial advice, but I actually bought calls mm. because I think when people hear people shorting and a potential short squeeze, that the DJT stock is a great stock to treat like a meme stock. For sure. For sure. Yeah, we'll see but that's happens. not shorting anyway, though. I mean- that doesn't, they don't, aren't sh- uh, selling short. That's just a derivative. I know. But people hear it yeah. and they go, oh, they think it's going to go down. I'll show you. Exactly. <laughs> they, I, I, that I agree with. <laughs> so I, I, you know, not financial advice. And there was a Trump mural in Chicago after uh, the shooting. Mural on the building on 70th, 70th and Halstead in Chicago. Inglewood's now MAGA country. Yeah. And Inglewood, if you know, Chicago is a very black area. And it so. says, does CIA miss? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next part of things, page four of housekeeping. A lot of unhinged Democrats are saying that Trump is exaggerating his uh, ear injury. Or they don't believe he was shot at all. Yeah, it was made up. An AR-15 would have exploded on impact or something, some <laughs> weird ballistics thing we've never heard of. Yeah, the people that know the least about guns have the most to say about it. And there was a funny meme. Trump is exaggerating his about his ear, and it's like the most uh, COVID scared person of all time. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I saw a lot of people at the RNC were wearing uh, ear bandages in solidarity with Trump. Yeah, classic. There he is. Biden and Baldwin. You know what? What? I like it. Me too. I'm happy to see so many people standing with Trump. That's cool. And who's going to tell you it's not cool? It's there's definitely been some sort of vibe shift recently yeah. in the broader uh, broader spectrum of politics, and you know, Inglewood. We're talking about somebody else mentioned MAGA hats in San Francisco. Yeah. So it's kind of time to stuff a few nerds back into a locker. It's kind of time to uh, to rep your boy because <laughs> Biden's not anything popular, right? Exactly. People We're saying are- retard now. Everyone's saying retard, whatever they want. Yep, F slurs, N words. We're all, <laughs> it's all getting used. But the people that look one at One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> the people that look at that and try to make fun of them, they say it's not cool. Who's going to tell you it's not cool? Uh, people who kill their babies and fat Amy Schumer? Fat Amy Schumer, someone who's like using the wrong pronouns for a guy because he thinks he's a girl now. Yeah. Uh, I don't really take advice from you. And then this might be an unpopular opinion. A lot of people online, the Democrats, are posting the people with the ear bandages in solidarity with Trump saying uh-huh. that, oh, MAGA is a cult. Yeah. You know what? What? Good. I'm happy to be in a MAGA cult. <laughs> like, the world's going to complete shit right now. I'm looking to get together with some like-minded people who see it correctly and cult up. Your guys' is cult thinks Dylan Mulvaney's hot and Joe Biden had a bad night. Yeah, and taxpayers should pay for everyone's prep. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know what else. Yeah, your guys' cult has uh parades for people who kill their babies. You know? Like Not good. Your, your cult's wrong, and that's way worse to be in a wrong cult. Yeah. You know? 
So like with the way things are going, it's very true. Not all cults, and I'm kind of not really agreeing with you here in general, but not all cults are equal. Some are sick. Yeah, some are bad. Some, like, you know, yeah, some are bad. Some are good. Some are based in truth. Some are based in lies. So in a time where things are the way they are, I think it's good to be on a cult, if you want to call it that, of Christian patriots who realizes there's a spiritual war at hand for our souls and is planning accordingly, as opposed to be being the cult that's for the bad guy's side who's trying to suck everyone's souls and are useless, useful idiots. Yeah. Let an alien, an objective alien come in and say like, which one of these looks more fucked up to you? And he'll go, oh, these guys, Dylan Mulvaney one. Yeah. <laughs> right away. <laughs> exactly. So that's my take. It's like, they call us a cult. Fine. Everyone's in a cult these days. Which cults are more correct? It's not the one on Joe Biden's side. So. <laughs> Um, and as a reminder, their cult uh, tried to blow Trump's brains out last week, which could have led to a civil war. And we actually have some additional proof that that was kind of the plan. This guy can't confirm this, but this guy looks trustworthy. Yeah, he's he got some like Warby boy Parkers. He's got some Warby Parkers on or something. <laughs> um, he said that his new insurance policy has some very interesting things uh, outlined. Hi, just got my uh, home insurance stuff in the mail. Dan, why are you doing an Instagram video on that? Well, it's because when I got to the last page, I noticed this. A war and civil war exclusion clause. When did this start? That's interesting. So insurance is not paying out if it's a civil war. And then insurance is also the ones that were kind of like, pulling the thread on the COVID stuff because mm. they needed to pay out so many things. And they yeah. were like, well, why did you put him on a into in, uh, intubated uh, ventilator in, ventilator? Why did you intubate him and stuff like that? So insurance companies are the ones that a lot of times pay as a result of whatever the deep state's plans are. If something like big black swan event style thing happens. Yeah. And they're also the ones that are going to be like, well, let's look into why this happened. Yeah. So that's interesting to me. Yeah, it is. All right, well, that is the end of housekeeping. I just wanted to let you guys know in bonus land today, we're going to be talking a lot about J.D. Vance, uh, potential war with Iran, and then J.D. Vance kind of being about that. Mm -hmm. We're going to look into that. Um, and then also Elon Musk leaving California. And we also have some funny uh, tweet stuff or Twitter stuff from Elon Musk and the Krasensteins. Uh, before we end housekeeping, I do owe you guys an explanation. The fast is over. Remember, we didn't really settle it last episode. Yeah. The seven-day fast is over. I did it successfully. I waited to tell you until now. Uh, seven days, no food, just water, salt, black coffee, and a little bit of electrolytes. It was difficult, but we did it. I lost 22 pounds. Crazy. What was the hardest uh, day? Day two. Ooh, yeah, because you were so far away from water. It's like you're in the desert, and you know the sign says 30 miles away. Yeah. And you know you have to walk all 30. Day two, it's very far from food. I'm not eating tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Like you're never eating again, basically, and you just ate. Yeah. Like you just had recently eaten. Um, eat it. <laughs> so, yeah, day two was tough. Day three was tough. Day four and five were basically the same, kind of just flat days no day six was tough day seven was actually really tough okay but once you're within six hours it's just a countdown all right i just asked a small question you didn't have to yap <laughs> you didn't have to yap me off all right let's get into cringe of the week all right moving on to cringe of the week our first clip of cringe is actually two clips from our new favorite pet josh cedar yeah Cider. Um, let's go to the first one where he's getting a lot of looks around town. Hey everyone. So something I've noticed lately is guys look at me like I'm a piece of meat and it's like up here guys up here. So I just noticed that whenever I'm out in public, people are always staring at me and kind of giving me these looks. So I feel like I'm seeing more of like an object now instead of a person. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's completely losing his shit. I know. He's completely mad. There's delusional, and then there's whatever that was. Like, people, uh, yeah, you're turning heads. They're breaking their neck to see you. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck was that? It's like catching a weird Bigfoot in the corner of your eye or something. Sometimes it's I'll do that, too, where I'll see, like, a really gay guy, mm -hmm. and then I'll, like, kind of stare at him extra yeah. just because I want to see like how gay they are <laughs> and like what stupid shit they're up to. And then you check grinder 
to see how many feet away they are exactly. And then I tell them to meet up, and then I'm like, yeah. It's crazy. Then, but I, I really do look sometimes just to see how gay everyone's acting. And then if they see me looking, they probably think, like, check another out. one. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> like, no, buddy. Oh. I just wanted to see a grown man in rollerblades at a Speedo with acrylic nails. Yeah, that's one. That's like a once in a while thing. <laughs> that's you rare. don't see that every day. Um, and then Josh, now that he's a lady, he's having some issues fitting into clothes. Yeah. Um, but he's going to work on that and bring some awareness to it. I just wanted to jump on here and express my disappointment with sizing. Um, I feel like a lot of companies use sizing and misrepresent sizing to body shame women um, and to send this message that they need to lose weight and they're not thin enough. And I really don't like it. Um, I got this super cute top. It's advertised as a large. It fits more like an extra, extra small. And I want you to tell me if this looks like a large top to you. Um, just using <laughs> common sense. Wow, Josh. It sounds like it's time to upend the clothing industry. Yeah. <laughs> Change everything for you. And this guy, I looked it up. He's six feet tall. Yeah. So taller feet. than basically any girl you know, other than someone in the WNBA. About 240. 225 at least. Yeah. It looks pretty big. This is this is like a guy who lifted weights before he went on the Twink program. Yeah. So it's time to raise awareness and bring attention to women's clothing sizing issues because women's clothes don't fit a man who's six foot 240. And decided he was a woman last week. And decided he was a woman last week. So because of that, all of women's sizing needs to change. And that's basically what they do in everything. Yeah. They become women, and then whatever backlash or problem they face, whether it's the bathroom or clothes, uh, women's sports, and then they just ruin it. You should change everything about this thing that I wanted to get into because now I'm in here. Yeah. My brain got poisoned. I have chemicals in my body. My genes got turned on and off, and now I'm convinced I'm a lady, and now we need to make bathrooms dangerous, sports not fun. <laughs> <laughs> and clothes fit me and I sit off of me and I'm yeah so ego <laughs> such an ego maniac this whole both of these things are me 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 everyone's staring at me it's like you're a freak these clothes <laughs> don't fit me you're a six foot man um, <laughs> but I'm starting to teeter on this guy is faking it this is a bit this whole thing is a bit because it's getting too crazy I believe he's injecting himself with hormones so can I, connect these uh, has he posted that have you seen that he says he's like a few months on HRT Oh, guys. It's committed to the bit. Satire, the, the line is getting blurrier than ever. And then also with this XL thing, or this feels like an extra, extra small, how would you know what that's like? And I think this on social media is kind of like a, you're reaching out. It's a handshake to fat girls, mm. people who are complaining about sizes and stuff. It's like, hey, I'm with you. Mm. I'm just like you. That's so a good point. He might be trying to find a new demographic. Yeah, that's smart. Let's go to our next clip. It's Mark Cuban. Okay. And Mark Cuban is giving a speech. I don't know where, but listen to what he says. Oh, I need all of us to really open up and talk to each other. Even when it's difficult. Even when it's not something that we're comfortable with. Particularly those of you who look like me in the white community. Because it's hard to discuss race when you're white. The reality is, just to be brutally honest, when people talk about white privilege, we get defensive. Very subversive, Mark. Nice work, Mark. That's some of your best. Yeah. So you see how it goes? Like he talks about white privilege and how bad it is. And you look at the video and you assume that Mark is white because mm -hmm. he's talking about it. He looks like a white guy. But Mark is secretly Jewish. Of course. And is I don't even think it's a secret. Mark's just Jewish. Yeah. Mark's Jewish. And he's talking about how white people need to do better. And then he looks like a white person and is saying white people need to do better and white people have this privilege, which isn't true. If anything, there is a Jewish privilege that exists in society. If you look uh, who's overrepresented in like the high level things, every level of Ivy League schools, they're overrepresented in the student body and uh, in the presidencies. Mm -hmm. um, they're overrepresented in C-suite jobs of Fortune 500 companies. Mm. Um, and then also financially, they do the best out of any other group in the country. And then when you say that, they will say, oh, it's a meritocracy and Jewish people are really smart and they have great family values. And if that's the case, if it's a meritocracy and everyone does as good as they can do, why are you talking about white privilege, Mark? Mm -hmm. I agree. And that's the thing. It's like, oh, because they're smart. It's like, OK, I accept that. Then never say anything about white people ever again, because we're pretty smart, too. Exactly. Our high achievers achieve pretty high. But no, Mark 
Chabinsky, which I believe is his real last name, he wants to blame the problem on whites and white privilege uh, because that makes the most sense because Western whites are the last stand against the bad, bad plans of the deep state and the globalists. There you go. So the, the final gem is uh, the United States of America. Uh, that's the crown gem. And the only way through that and to get that is to take white people down a few pegs. Yeah, and not very cool, Mark. Mark's doing the Mark's doing the heavy lifting there. On the street somewhere. All right, we're moving on to our last page of Cringe of the Week, the cancel culture debate. Yeah. We got uh, some people, a couple people commented on the last episode where we said it's good that we're getting scalps of people who were saying that it's good that Trump got shot and we, I wish he didn't miss. Stuff we like mentioned that. libs of TikTok was scalping some people and we said, good, you know, yeah, uh, enjoy it. Enjoy the world you created, right? Exactly. And then some people were saying, fuck, as talks is endorsing cancel culture now. Not really surprised, TBH. Yep. And it's actually not the same. Um, yes, I don't believe in cancel culture. If everyone agreed to not do it. It's like was... a theory versus practice thing. Exactly. We're like, yeah, in theory, cancel culture should not exist. But people have been scalping us for a decade at this point. Yeah. Over nothing. For fake stuff. Like, well, like I'm, I don't believe in cancel culture when it comes to like someone finding an old tweet where you called someone gay and now you get fired from your job. That's cancel culture and that's a problem. But we're actually in a war right now mm -hmm. and they're getting us at every level in every single way. We actually have like a list of some people who have been canceled. Uh, the cop who gave $25 to Kyle Rittenhouse's defense fund. Is fired. He got fired. Yeah. And that Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty. Yeah. That was a justified shooting with like two pedophiles and a, cr and a felon. And they fired that guy. Yeah. So that's a cancel culture. $25. California man fired over alleged white power sign as he was cracking his knuckles. Remember the guy with the hand out the window like this? And they said it was a white power sign because his hand looked a certain way? He got fired. He got and fired. he was Mexican, I think. Yeah. And then remember they did a Nick Sandman? Yeah. That's an easy one. And then there was one more we collected, um, the, the the city bike Karen. Remember the lady where the black kids took that that ner the nurse's bike, pregnant nurse's bike that the, she had just unlocked. From and then the everyone said, it's my, "I think it's their bike." Yeah. Well, let's cancel this bitch. And then they went after her. Yeah. So yeah, cancel culture shouldn't exist, but cancel culture does exist, and it's used incorrectly against the right wing whenever they do anything anywhere near right wing. Yeah. So it's a war. And we're going to cancel back. And the things that we're actually getting mad at are important things. If the lady at Home Depot says, uh, I, I, I wish they didn't miss. Too bad whatever. they weren't a better shooter. Too That's bad they weren't. Quote. Yeah, too bad they weren't a better shooter. Then that lady should get fired because Home Depot has standards where they wouldn't accept something like that. Yeah. It's pretty simple. And then you can also make the argument like, hey, Home Depot retail workers are below our level. And it's like, OK, I'm, I'm ready to hear that out. The government paid people like government jobs, firefighters, whatever, who are saying that and getting scalped. I don't care. The Home Depot lady. OK, whatever. This is like a 60, 55 plus year old woman mm -hmm. who should just simply know better as well. And also, um, this is part of the vibe change. Like you can't really say the crazy shit. And some of that crazy shit is also said like in terms of anti-white rhetoric. And so we want to take that like ball back. We want to like take our ground back and say, hey, some of these crazy, insane things you guys have been saying, they're actually off limits and you shouldn't feel comfortable saying them in public. That's a um, good point. You know what I mean? And you can argue about the nuance. Oh, Home Depot worker. Oh, this. It's a, it's a battle that they created and has been going on for a decade, right? Yeah. And then the mistake <clears throat> that conservatives make is we always say, well, we're, we don't do that. We're taking the high road. We have morals. And then the other side doesn't have morals, takes the low road and tries to ruin your life. And Scalps then you don't, you. and then you get scalped and you don't defend yourself. Yeah. So I'm not going to get, we don't get involved in that stuff. And then they do get involved and your life gets ruined for it. So it's either a fight and we're saying, well, I'm not looking to fight. And they keep punching us in the face and well, I'm not, I don't fight. I don't believe in fighting. And they keep hitting us and kicking us. Eventually, you're going to have to swing back. And this is a perfect opportunity because these people are actually saying messed up things that don't go by their company standards of what's acceptable. Yeah. And then a lot of you guys have jobs, right? Like a white collar job or a regular company that has HR. Think about some of the insane shit you've heard at that job while some of the inverse stuff of your beliefs has been like totally off limits to say. 
Some of that ground needs to be taken back and rectified. That's a good point. And then the insane shit leftists are saying, oh, we need a few bodies in the wreckage. Okay, I don't fucking care. Nobody cared. Sam Hyde had this tweet um, that I just want to read one part of, right? Uh, Basically saying he was fine with this and all that. But he said about leftists, the only time they care about rules, civility, unity, et cetera, is when those things can be used to handcuff you while your kids are trans and your money is stolen to pay for some gay war or some group of people that hates you and is replacing you. It's kind of like a, they use the rules only when it's to step on your neck and give you a reason that you can't get them back. But then they break the rules all the time to get you. There was actually, when it comes to the Home Depot situation, there was a tweet and a reply that perfectly summed up the whole situation. We're going to end this segment on that. This one? Yep. Um, And this was basically in reply to someone saying like, if you are, uh, uncomfortable with a single Home Depot worker getting fired, how are you going to be okay with 15 to 20 million people getting deported, right? It's like there's a lot of greasy hard work that is about to come up, and it's not time for right-wingers to get soft, right? Yeah. And so somebody replied saying, I understand what deporting illegal aliens would accomplish, but I have no idea what getting a Home Depot cashier fired accomplishes. And then Alaric the Barbarian said, shot across the bow at libs on a culture-wide scale, creating the same icing effect that's caused conservatives to become a disorganized underground counterculture rather than a pillar of ideological and political power. It's the first step on that road. That's a good point. And I agree with that. That's exactly like uh, we were just saying with the how how long have you had to hide a lot of your beliefs at your job or hide a lot of your beliefs that like it's not even politically appropriate for you to say like totally normal things that you believe. And if anyone should be hiding their political beliefs, it should be the people who think that kids can change their genders or we need 20 million illegals here. Yeah. Or uh, you should go to a concentration camp during COVID. You know, you're unvaxxed. You should have like a star on your arm or some sort of shit like that. That's radical shit. Yeah. That's insane. Saying I like Trump. He's going to lower taxes and deport illegals. That's not radical at all. But they did the treatment to us that made us silent and hiding in like a fringe when actually we're the majority. And in terms of like this cancel culture, the theory versus practicality thing, like you can be like, oh, you know, this isn't that great. Like, I don't feel that good about this. But wasting your time trying to uncancel somebody who just wished the president's head exploded on TV, waste of my time. There's yep. way more important things for me to think about. That put person's energy not into. in my cult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on to Urban Decay. Um, first clip of Urban Decay is the Target fight. There's a fight at Target. Pause it real quick. I want to play a little game with you guys. Okay. Try to make out something that anyone is saying (laughs) starting now. Okay. Try to just a sentence, a word. Just listen and try to make out something. Her grandson. Okay. All right. That's one word that I've heard. I heard be quiet. (laughs) Target used to be like the higher end of like a Walmart. Yeah. And it used to be like more rare and like people who were too good for Walmart would go to Target. It was nice. Shoplifting was like heavily policed. They keep the riffraff out. Yeah. Uh, And now it's just toast. There's too many of them. They lost the, they lost the bread and butter of what they originally set out to do, I think. Yeah. And then all these people are just like yelling and in some sort of dispute over a cell phone, I think was stolen. I'm very lost. They phone. I'm very unclear on some of the words, but the thing I want to point out about this one that's so fascinating to me is there's three generations in a fight. Like Mm. in like a yelling brawl battle thing right now. Like here's exhibit. uh, There's the youngest generation. That's who's there. And then here's the middle. This lady with the thickest thighs you've ever seen trying looking for someone. 
Uh, and then it goes all the way to the woman who said, my grandson, right? Yeah, three gens. So that's like three generations. You all get together for a picture, except the picture is a fight at Target. And everyone's down to throw. Yeah. That's crazy. Crazy. Let's go to the next restaurant fight. It's a little bit of a fight section. We're going to go fast through these. Oh, my gosh. I knew it was going to happen. You tripping. You tripping. You tripping. You tripping. You tripping. You tripping. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Is what someone, the filmer, said. I knew that was going to happen. It's like, yeah, it's it's easier to guess. And as usual, they're repeating, "You tripping, you, you tripping, trippin'. you tripping." This is a nice restaurant. They have tablecloths and like glass bottles of sparkling or still water and yeah. glass bottles. The water in the glass bottle on the table can't lit candles. Everything. Mm -hmm. That's a nice ambiance. And then you let a certain demo in. Yeah. And it just gets fighty. It gets and then fighty. Our next clip is at a restaurant as well. Uh, these people did a dine and dash, but they forgot their purse. And then they came back and then were acting like they were not in the wrong. Can we wait a minute? Oh, don't give me my purse. I don't want to walk. No, chill out. They're going to give it to you. Chill out. Chill out. They're going to give it to you. All right, you go. Chill out. No, chill out. Give me my purse. Mm. So she goes in and just goes, that's my shit. That's my purse. Give it to me now. But that concept wasn't reciprocal. There was no thought to uh, the food that you ate without paying for. But immediately it's like, that's my shit on a one way, like low IQ track, right? One way brain can't really think of the the dynamics of the situation of like, I just ate the food that was theirs and didn't pay and ran out. Yeah. All she can think of the, is in the present moment. That guy has my purse. Crazy behavior. Very crazy. Um, and then a lot of this crazy behavior obviously starts at a young age. Yeah. Uh, this next clip, this is from a couple months ago, but I never saw it. Uh, these two kids, like teenagers, get arrested for stealing a car and they get put in the back of the cop car together and they just start laughing and think it's funny. On the first second, <laughs> you see me. <laughs> you see me. I don't think. On the daddy that was him too. On the whoever would take me with a real. He had that fat cop dog. I ain't gonna think he had it. 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 He and then also how you act in a cop car. And I think a lot of this stuff should kind of be taken into consideration when it comes time to sentencing. Mm. You know, like a judge should be looking at this and be like, okay, that's an aggravating factor for your sentence right now. How unserious it is. Like if you're in, handcuffed in the back of a cop car. And you're it, laughing. It should not be a laughing moment. You should be uh, afraid or like you should be facing consequences if you're laughing. So yeah. I think that's something pe people need to take into consideration, right? Yeah. Contrition, all those things. And when someone clearly doesn't have any, uh, you get the slap on the wrist is a harder slap. Yeah. They know they're going to get let out and they can do it again. And all their boys do the crimes and get let out and they do it again. So it's just like a hobby for them. Yeah. I don't even feel like uh, they're wrong. You know, this is kind of what happens when our system is weak and no one fears it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, they get off and they know they're getting off and it's just a laughing matter, right? Yeah. So the kids are not all right. Um, our last piece of Urban Decay, uh, students see rise in SAT scores, but a drop in the number of black students taking tests concerns officials. There's the, <laughs> that's why the rise happened. It's called environmental storytelling, I think. It's called uh, rule of averages. Yeah. And when you don't average in 400 uh, thousands of times... Everyone else's score, <laughs> everyone else's score seems to go up. There's that white privilege Mark Cuban was talking about. Yeah. All right. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. We're moving on to Uplifting Gold. Our first clip or first story from Uplifting, uh, Pizza Butt Buffet is back. Pizza Hut Buffet is bringing back its beloved lunch buffet. Yeah. Thank you, Donald Trump. Yeah. Thank not you, Trump. Not even in office, and you still get stuff like this done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is Americana. It's obviously all seed oils and crap. Yeah. And plastic and cooked in plastic and seed oils. Um, Mark but, Cuban adds something to it. 
Yeah, Mark, Mark Cuban's out there in the in the kitchen going. Mark Cuban's in the kitchen putting some shit on. You don't it. want to make your own pizza at home. It yeah. takes too much work. To it's five the, bucks. I'll do it. It's only five dollars. Let me just prepare it for you. A little bit of rapeseed oil, a little bit of sunflower oil, vegetable oil. There you go. It's pizza. Basically, what's going on? Yeah. Um, the Chinese Mexican cowboy. You guys know I like foreigners that sing American. Uh, this Chinese person is Mexican. That's rare. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's a one of one. Um, let's go to our next clip, the workplace frustration. What is this, a guy at some sort of retail store? Yeah, he was making an announcement but losing his shit at the same time. I'm a tough in this shit! <laughs> I'm gonna turn around, somebody come to me! <laughs> it's a goodwill. <laughs> so he's going through it. Don't go to work tomorrow. That's not who you want to piss off. Yeah. That's who gets pissed off, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the dog who knows how to whisper. 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 <laughs> Good job, whisper. whisper. <laughs> Good job. He knows how to whisper. And what's he eating? Green beans? Mm. He's getting a green bean? He's getting a reward. All right. He, he likes his green bean. Good boy. He knows how to whisper. Now let's go to the parrot who farts. This is disgusting. Wow. <laughs> wow, indeed. Goodness me. Wow. It's like a human. That's disgusting. Wow. That's disgusting. I hate birds. I don't like birds either. As wow. pets, I hate them. If you have a bird that's a pet and you look closely, the feathers float and then they land in your food. Yeah. Oh, Every time. Yeah, disgusting. There's feathers in the air. Yeah. Every single time. The thing goes like this in his cage and then the whole room has feathers floating for hours. Yeah. All right. Last clip of Uplifting Gold, the jet ski kid. You gonna fix it? I can try. <laughs> I'll fix it. Just the most botched trunk ever. I'll uh, fix it. That's good stuff. That's yeah. Americana. Yeah. Well, that is the end of our Friday episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, we do have okay. I'm gonna come clean. There's no shout outs today. Fleckus needs to come clean because he's been punting a lot. Of, we've been getting a lot of shots. Guys, I have, guys. Like, I have like 200 people. Crazy shit. Yeah, it's getting crazy. So, But we do have one that we said absolutely yes to, that we have to. Uh, this is happy birthday to Michelle coming up. Michelle S. Michelle on S., Jake's wife. On July 24th, Jake's wife. Uh, and Jake told us he is taking you on a trip on Monday. And uh, he asked us to reveal the destination we know of the it. trip. So want to say it? Yeah. You are going to Haiti. Haiti. Yeah. That's the, cool. The unrest is over. The beaches are nice this time of year. And then so the pack some swimwear. Yeah. Exactly. The beaches are really good. And the, the group you're with, someone, or two of the people and like their security or whatever got killed last month. Yep. And because of that, they've upped the security. So now there's two guys with like little six shooters and like three bullets each. And, yeah. They should be the there. local warlord is very he's easy to work with. So you guys are gonna enjoy. Happy birthday, Michelle. Happy birthday, Michelle. Show watchers, we appreciate it. Friends in real life. Yep. Um, and then also, this doesn't count as a shout out, but um, so this guy's name is Aaron Morse. He's a very talented uh, musician. I have him linked in the description. He made this song for the show. It's going to close this out, and we're going to play the whole thing. Uh, but before that, thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Join Bonus Land. We have a great 30-minute Bonus Land dropping right now with tons of good topics and clips we didn't get to today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a nice weekend. See you on Tuesday. Enjoy the song.